my daughter was raped. Once by a violent criminal and twice by the system. I haven't spoken about it <clears throat> um, because it's hard. But with the prevalence of a rape culture that just seems to permeate everything right now, um, especially in light of everything that's going on. <clears throat> um, I, you know, I've been meaning to talk about it before, but now it just seems that much more important. Um, it's really hard to put it all together. But uh, I think that this system needs to change. It's broken. My daughter was in a very difficult relationship for over a year. Um, but she was really strong. Uh, she wanted to save people. And uh, she wanted to save her boyfriend. Um, it was a difficult situation. <clears throat> that has nothing to do with the, um, the things that happened to her. She, um, she was strong enough to get through what she was getting through until she got raped. Uh, in Montreal on Sundays, there's this place they call uh, Les Tam Tam. That is a park that they do, they play Tam Tam, the drums. Um, it's a great place people hang out and it's near a woods uh, near Mount Royal in Montreal. And um, she was there to uh, meet up with friends. So she was alone. And uh, so at one point, she decides to go into the woods to go to the bathroom like everybody does. And uh, she was violently raped. Um, her first instinct, as soon as she got out of there, was to call the police. And so she did. She, uh, she uh, got in the car, she uh, went to the hospital, um, and she did a rape kit. She did everything that she needed to do to prevent this from happening to anybody else. <clears throat> but instead of being, uh, you know, giving testimony, she was interrogated. She was interrogated like a fucking criminal. And it, it, she was naively under the impression that that's just what women do because it's the right thing to do is to report it. It took her a week before she told me. And when she did, she was incensed because she said, Mom, I can't believe how badly I was treated. And one of the <clears throat> interrogators was a woman. And there was at one point when she became so rude, I, you know, she didn't tell me all the details. She told me enough. But she said she became so rude and, and just curt with me that I, I looked at her and I said, you do realize that I was raped that I'm the victim and it, and it made I, I the impression Cleo gave me was that she's the woman stopped for a moment so <clears throat> bad enough as it is um, she did what she had to do and in the following weekend she went back to that place with friends and she wanted to tell girls that were there not to go into the woods alone because of what happened to her. 
To which her amazement realized that most of the women knew. And she thought, why wouldn't they have reported it? Why wouldn't they have tried to prevent what happened to her from happening to her like she wanted to do for others? But it, it was so <clears throat> evident, but still, she still thought it was important. That same day, she saw the perpetrator. And she immediately phoned the cops and immediately uh, got in the car and went down to the station and they picked him up. Um, not with her, but they picked him up. And again, Cleo was interrogated. And it, it's, it, it's bad enough to be raped, but to have to relive it over and over again, but be treated like dirt when you're the victim, I, I don't know what kind of sensitivity training they get. I don't know why women have to be treated this way because we all know that they're not reporting it because of this, because women are pe being demeaned. And I, I just, it's, it's 2016. Things should be getting better, not worse. And so... She went through the same thing. Um, but I, she still felt like, it, even though it was horrible, that it was still the right thing to do. And uh, a few days later, she was on the street. And she saw the guy that raped her. And... She realized then that it didn't matter, that all the trouble that she did to go through to try to prevent that person from doing that to another woman <clears throat> was for naught. And it broke her. And from that moment on, uh, in the next two months to follow, she started becoming physically ill. She got the, the cold, and then tonsillitis and antibiotics. And, and it just kept, I mean, her system was um, just on the floor. Uh, and it was, she kept, you know, getting a little bit better and then getting physically ill. Um, until she called me from the hospital with uh, bilateral pneumonia. Most of you know among my friends that when she was in the hospital, they put her in the ICU. They almost put her in a coma to help her breathe. Uh, <clears throat> and um, it, it, thankfully she became stable, but she was in the ICU and uh, she fought to live. Um, and because of all the treatments of the pneumonia during this time she found out that she was pregnant and that it wouldn't be viable if she was treated for her pneumonia that was so severe so we had decisions to make and uh, <clears throat> she knew that it wasn't by her perpetrator, thankfully, but suffice it to say um, that she was a week in the hospital and she fought to live and she was a week home and I was able to keep her safe and spend time with her and be her mommy, even though she was almost 24 years old. And so uh, we had to return a week later for another procedure. 
And then she wanted to go to her place. And I begged her to come home with me to recuperate some more. But she begged, she wanted to go home to her apartment with her boyfriend. And uh, <clears throat> so basically within a week, she was so fragile from being so ill, from going through everything she'd gone through, that uh, the strength she had uh, was gone. And it was too much for her, and she took her own life. And I know that it has most everything to do with being broken by having been raped. So I lost my only child and the world lost an award-winning artist. Um, a talented, beautiful individual uh, that I lost two years, two months, 15 days ago. And I think that the system needs to start caring about the lives that are being lost, about the help that's not there for victims of violence and the way that women are treated has got to change. There needs to be better training for the professionals that are dealing with these victims. And just, we're better than this. We are better than this. It's got to stop. Don't let my daughter Cleo's death be in vain. I, this is why I'm doing this. It, it's just senseless. And I, I just, I needed to put it out there. It's got to stop. Thank you for hearing me. I think more of these stories have to be told and heard and so something changes. This is just my voice that's shared something that it's taken me over two years to be able to talk about. Because I hope that it can help one person out there to know that they're not alone in being treated this way and to know that we've got to stop this. We've got to be the witness to those who can't speak for themselves anymore.